church yesterday. Went to church yesterday. We got I went to church today. It was, uh, it was great. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Mission Stories. My name is Troy. We're uh, weird, crazy, wacky, wonderful stories from the mission. I'm here with Lyndon Nagalus. Hello. He's uh, my perennial co-host in this journey of, into the memories of our minds where we, we plumb the depths of what our experiences were as uh, LDS missionaries for two years. Ah! There's a... Why would you... He, there's a bug on Lyndon's... It was a beetle. It's a beetle. And you just flick it. You don't kill it. Now it's just alive somewhere. Or and, dead somewhere. Or dead somewhere. Depending on the power of that flick. It looked powerful. I got strong fingers. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about them strong fingers. Leonard, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. You're doing well. Got myself a little lap blanket here. He's, are you, is it too chilly in here? You can be honest. <laughs> you can you know, be... I think it's just right. Okay. I think I'm being overly sensitive right now. Well, I don't, you know, we are a sensitive bunch here at Mission Stories, and we want to make sure that everyone's, you know, this is a safe space. And uh, that's not necessarily true. I don't think it's true. We uh, we shred a lot of groups of people. <laughs> I think it's a dangerous and hostile it's environment. Da- <laughs> it's the exact opposite of a safe space. Um, we have some things to talk about, I suppose, don't we? Do there's, we? There's things to talk about. All right. Um, first of all, I know you have some things to talk about. Uh, go. Ahead. You had like a thing. What was the th- what was the thing? <laughs> What was that thing? You know, I did have things to talk. Well, big news. All right. The prophet was here. The prophet was here. That's right. Yeah. And um, then the uh, biggest outcome from that, I had a little Snapchat. And everyone loves and knows your Snapchat. Well, story. then all the girls I've matched on Mutual <laughs> all uh, had comments about it. Oh, they were all just... And I'd forgotten that they were even on my Snapchat. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah, right. One funny picture of the prophet, and suddenly everyone has something to say. Was it funny? How funny was it? Well, just that uh, he was kind of behind the uh, podium. Yeah. And so I took a picture and like drew a stick man where uh-huh. he was. Yeah. And I was like, I swear the prophet's here. Just because you couldn't see him because he was behind oh, okay. the podium. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, all right. So I got my emails up here. Okay. We're good to go. And we got emails. So yeah, the prophet was here. He had things to say. I didn't go to that. Uh, I'll tell you why. I had, unfortunately, I had forgotten and I'd made other plans. In the, in the meantime, I was hanging out with my buddy, my buddy Nick. Uh, shout, shout out, out to, to Nick. <laughs> also, shout out to President Nelson. Thanks for coming to Calgary. Elder Raz Band. Uh, the Raz Band. He was the hype man. He, <laughs> he got up beforehand and was like, you guys ready? That was exactly it. And then like the Beatles, they just they started up into uh, or President yeah. Nelson started. Did uh, President Nelson's wife talk at all? Yeah, she was funny. She was funny. She's a joke. She is funny, isn't she? And she was just like thrown out like local. She's just like, we got here a little early. <laughs> and I was like, should we go to Peter's drive in? And everyone's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> local <laughs> reference. We know that place. We know and love it. Um, what is, sorry, hold on one second. Never mind. It was fine. I thought anyway. So uh, we've been talking for three minutes and 46 seconds. Uh, now I just, see, this is the magic of technology. Uh, let's get back to it. You were, uh, sister Nelson. She's hyping everybody up talking, you know, Peters. Yeah. What else did she reference? Calgary tower. She mentioned something in the Calgary Roots Herald, Chris. the Calgary Herald, the mountains, <laughs> the mountains, <laughs> just things. She had like <laughs> these things written on her hand in ink. She's just like Peters. Yeah. Uh, and how about Trudeau? Everyone's like, eh, eh, we're not sure. Those mountains sure are beautiful. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> um, that was her saber. Always mention the mountains and Peters. Uh, okay, what did, do you remember what she talked about? See, this is the thing. Well, <laughs> people are, because I didn't go and I got, you know, I got some flack at church today. They're like, you didn't go? And I was like, no, uh, what did he talk about? And the people I asked were like, well, uh, hmm, uh, what did he talk about? It's just like, come on, come on, can we not even remember what he talked about? It's almost like I paid attention because I knew I'd have to report this on the podcast. Yes. To you. And, and then I knew everyone. my parents would inevitably be upset with how I recount it. Yeah. And Why? Would, well, I think they're all, this is my theory, 
And we'll never know unless Cheryl sends us another message. Yeah. I think every time you don't show up to something, general conference. I don't. President Nelson coming. To, she's upset that you didn't show up. Yep. And that means I have to explain it to you. Mm-hmm. And then I explain it poorly and she blames you. That's one theory. She blames me. Well, it's your, your if you would have gone, mission. you wouldn't need me to <laughs> explain things to you. I can correct you and your, uh, your missteps. No, I think it's <laughs> it probably makes for better podcasting when one person is sort of like interview, you know, yeah. like I'm interviewing you about your experience with that thing. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sorry, uh, yeah. Lyndon's mother, Cheryl. Uh, I had to take the bullet just so we could have a better podcast episode today. Yeah. And that's the only reason why. Yeah. So everyone was pretty much hyping President Nelson. Because mm-hmm. you got to think he's kind of like being introduced to everyone. Be like, hey, he's a brand new prophet. He is. So they got to be like, he's legit. He is the prophet. Yeah. <laughs> he's the bell of the ball. Yeah. And so he jokes. He gets up there and he's like, it feels like I'm at my funeral. <laughs> the way everyone's talking about me. I'm like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Please don't die. <laughs> and so he talked a lot about. He's, hold on. How old is he now? 93. 93. Doesn't look a day over 80. <laughs> I was going to say 90. Um, yeah, he looks pretty good. We talked about his judo and his uh, jujitsu practices. A skiing. He skis? Well, that's the thing. That was in one joke, I think, in general conference. He was out skiing when he was like 92. <laughs> and then now that he's the prophet, someone was like, we got to keep him off the slopes. <laughs> he's like a surfer. He's like a, like a base jumper. I was about to say free base but that means something different. Uh, yeah. Base jumper. Paragliding. Paragliding. He's just like an adrenaline junkie. He's just like... Puts a adrenaline shot straight into his neck and then jumps off a building. Spreads a bunch, yeah. a bunch of pamphlets over the city. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, his his speech. Sorry, <laughs> right. Elder Razband kind of just gave like a highlight there. reel of his career, just like all his best quotes. Yeah. All his best things, and he's like, so far in his presidency, he's talked a lot about staying on the covenant path, and then he like looks around knowingly. He's like, brothers and sisters. <laughs> I think that might be a theme for his presidency. And then everyone's like, oh, They're like, oh prediction. Oh. Stand on the covenant path. Got standard yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Sister Nelson, besides lots of local references, mm-hmm. talked about what it's like to be the wife of the prophet and how things change oh. between being an apostle and being a prophet, how things are different. What are the differences? He receives revelation at all hours. In the night, you and mean. And she told a story where she received revelation to wake up early and leave him alone. Uh-huh. And it was alluded to. I think that's when he received the revelation for the ministering program. Oh. I think she had to be prompted to leave <laughs> so that he could be alone to receive revelation. And they didn't say what it was. <laughs> but I'm speculating here. You're speculating here. That's when he received the information for... The ministering program. So like in priesthood meeting, you know, there's no women allowed in priesthood meeting. Well, that's not true anymore. Oh. Which priesthood okay. meeting? <laughs> General conference? Well, I guess they're allowed. They're, you know, they're allowed to watch it. They're allowed to watch it, yeah. The joke I was going to make is that like, just like how in priesthood meeting, women have to leave when the prophet's about to receive some sick revelation, the yeah. lady's got to leave. And now we don't get to receive it anymore because they're listening. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> women uh, i'm just kidding uh, i'm so glad everyone you know why i'm so glad everyone can listen online now because we don't have to go to the stake we center. don't have to go to the stake center to listen to it although maybe that's like caused like sort of a a, a relaxment in relaxment is that a word uh in you know actually going because it's like if you think you're just like oh, i can just watch it at home i feel like you're more prone to just be like yeah i just won't watch it i gotta go to it get some ice cream you know, skip the conference part, go straight to the ice cream. Hmm. I suppose that could be done. That's a theory I have. Um, or the true and faithful will the true keep faithful. listening to priesthood session. No, but it's like that that old that old thing, you know, where the temple's right next to you. You're like, yeah, I'll go on Wednesday. Well, it's, you know, or like next week. But the people who have to travel like hundreds of kilometers, they go every week. <laughs> Makes no sense. Uh, you know what I'm right. saying. Y'all know what I'm saying, right? President Nelson. <laughs> Back to P. Nels. He talked a lot about the Book of Mormon. 
Matthew Mills. What did he say about the Book of Mormon, the B-O-M? Well, he was just talking about how how great it is. Uh, he yeah. did tell some sweet. He was just like, he's like, I shouldn't get into this. And he's like, I'm going to get into it. <gasps> and talks about like Bible bashing with a, a pastor at some conference oh. where he just kept bringing up Ezekiel 37 with Protestants, <laughs> Jewish people. He's like, what's in Ezekiel 37? He's like, explain that one. And he's like, they don't have an explanation because it's the Book of Mormon. And we're like, ah. <laughs> That's his one yeah. verse he has memorized just yeah. in case he needs a. Yeah. And he talked about. Uh, an irrefutable verse. How the Book of Mormon was translated uh, nine pages per day. Mm. He said even our modern day translators with computers and even previous translations can only translate a page a day. Mm. King James Version of the Bible, over 50 uh, translators, could only do a page a day. You know, they uh, they were a little less, they didn't have as much to work with, you know. That was back in medieval times. There's still 50 of them. Still. <laughs> but that's like a, that's like one gig of RAM on a, you know. That's true. So that's like what 50 scholars <clears throat> did back then is what one scholar in a computer can do today. Yeah. Still doesn't come close to old Joseph Smith's nine pages a day. Our good friend Joseph Smith and his nine pages a day. And, and he kept talking. They're very little because someone just bought the original manuscript or something for the print, the, the printer's manuscript for like oh. hundreds of thousands of dollars or something. Not the, the church did not buy this. <laughs> just a person? I don't know. They bought something and someone bought something else. It's hard to say. People <laughs> are buying things. He joked. He's like, why would someone do that when you can buy a copy today for a buck fifty? Or just free like, from the missionaries. Yeah, and everyone's like, we're just free? <laughs> he was on the internet. Uh, I don't know where he got that buck fifty from. He still thinks Maybe he's thinking about the cost of a pallet of, I don't know. <laughs> <Mormons>. <laughs> um, yeah, or he, he thinks he's or back he was, in like 1980 when they had to like, you know, pay for uh, books of Mormon. Wow. Did you know that? Like back in the day, this is like a father, my father's mission story, but he like, they used to have to like pay to have to like when they would give out books of Mormon, like when we did it, it was free. It was like, here's a copy. Yeah. When my dad did it, he said he'd be like, they talk all about it and give the lesson and everything and then commit them and then be like, here is your copy of the Book of Mormon. Just two dollars and we'll be on our way, kind of thing. And they're like, okay, now get out of here with this. Really? Yeah. So it was like, probably, <laughs> I imagine the numbers of people accepting Books of Mormon increased dramatically once it became free. Hmm. There also is a uh, a little theory in you know behavioral economics yeah. that when things have a cost associated to them, people value them more. Right. So, right. you know what? That's that might be true. And the other thing too is like I don't know. I've given I gave away countless numbers. Actually, that's not true. I in the beginning I gave away a lot of Book of Mormons. And then they're like, hey, slow down with just, like, giving those away. You know, like, that costs money. They're like, we have a budget. We got a budget. We, you know, we need to give them to people who you think will actually read them. I remember we had a shortage one time in our mission. Yeah. Where they were just like, someone, like, went to the storeroom to open up another box. Yeah. And they realized someone had forgot to reorder them. Oh, no. And they're like, we're all out. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, only give them to people who really mean it. <laughs> the shortage lasted all of a week, you know. Yeah. It's not too hard to ship a box from Salt Lake to Phoenix or no. wherever. No, no. That's interesting. A shortage. Yeah, we had uh I just, I remember like once we found we were short like our companionship and we had uh we found these old ones from like I think probably from the 80s, you know that old style with like the bigger letters and stuff. Yeah. And the blue was like a bit lighter and it was a bit, it was a bit bigger. I think there were more pictures in it back then or they just printed it less efficiently. Hmm. But uh, yeah, so we handed out these like old school Books of Mormon or copies of the Book of Mormon. Right. Oh, the prophet also, this is another thing he hesitated to say mm. where he's like, I don't want to speculate. Oh, and then he, <laughs> I love speculation. And then all he said, he's like, I kind of wish the titles were reversed. He's like, I wish it said Another Testament of Jesus Christ, the Book of Mormon. Almost like that's in the works. Uh, Almost like he's going to do it. Um, he's going to switch them. Subtitle that, becomes the title. He's he's a madman. <laughs> he's going crazy. <laughs> Could you imagine if, like, you, you, and, like, who else? I think it was, like, 
Theo was uh, was telling us, or he's telling me that like there's a rumor that they're gonna change the name of the church or something or shorten it up. Did he say anything about that? No, no. Okay. I was just I was just sitting there thinking. I was like, what would they shorten it to? Yeah. Christ of Saints. Uh, Church of Saints. <laughs> Church of Jesus Christ of Saints. Of Saints. The Saints of the Church of Jesus Christ. Ooh, I could get behind that. Ooh, that's like a band. But then we'd lose LDS. Yeah, it's pretty. Like I think I. There's no way that's a real thing. There's absolutely no way they're going to they're change the name. I think the only revelation is that it has to be called the Church of Christ. Yeah. That's, else that whose church that is it? Else whose church is it? That can't change. Yeah. But Latter-day Saints, that doesn't necessarily have to stay. I wonder if, I mean, they, I wonder if they can, like, change, like, the official title of it, you know, for, like, I don't know, <laughs> tax purposes or something or, like, <laughs> they're, you know. I don't think they have to worry about Tax, tax purposes. No, they, no, but uh, you know, umbrella corpse and no, that sort of thing. Um, anyway, so I could see that being a possibility, but uh, yeah, like the actual name that the church is known by, absolutely not. Yeah, I think he might be into this whole renaming things. He might be into it. We'll keep a we'll keep a, a sharp eye on that. Yeah, just in case uh, we're going to be giving away copies of another testament of Jesus Christ, the Book of Mormon, soon. Hey, I like it. I like it too. I'm down with it. Would you like another testament of Jesus Christ, the Book of Mormon? <laughs> I kinda, you know, I kind of like it. It's not. It's, it's definitely not bad. It's not the worst idea I've heard. It's not the worst idea you've heard. Me neither. Any? What else did he say? Any other good? Some good tits. Hmm. Tid bits. Um. He kind of like also reiterated how dope the doctrine is. Mm. Where he's just like, name a church with better theology. Than us. You can't. I was like, okay. He's asking a bunch of Mormons to name a, a <laughs> Not church actually. with better doctrine. He's just like a little reminder. <laughs> right. Well, he's telling stories about how he uh, gave a lecture in Ghana, 1986. Yeah. Because they knew he's, he's talking about open heart surgery. Mm-hmm. And then this African king comes along. Ooh. And he's like, who are you? Well, the real funny part that he told was... He met him before his lecture, yep. and he had a translator. So he would speak to the translator. Translator would speak to the king, mm. back and forth. But then after the lecture, the king comes up to him, and in perfect English is like, who are you anyway? <laughs> 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 and so that's when he's like, I'm an ordained apostle of Jesus Christ. Ooh. He's like, what do you know about Jesus Christ? And he's like, what do you know? <clears throat> and then he goes off, and it turns out this king in Africa is well-versed in the Bible. Oh. So that's when he also gets to go in and be like, well, let me tell you about another testament of Jesus Christ, the Book of Mormon. And he gets into Ezekiel 37 and the stick of Joseph and the mm-hmm. stick of Judah. And it's like there's some verse in the in the Bible where it's like, you know, other flocks, other sheep of other flocks of folds. Other folds I F- have. Folds, which are flocks, and sheep. sheep. I mean, yeah. And he's like, you know who they were? <laughs> the people in the Americas. <gasps> He's just mic dropping left and right. Did he like rip the mic out of the stand and just drop it every five seconds? Well, I mean, you went to church in that chapel today. The mic was still there. They could have reinstalled it. <laughs> they could have reinstalled he, it. He like gives a heads up to the like the facilities manager. He's like, yeah, I'm going to be ripping uh, mics out left and right. So, you know, just be ready with uh, more mics. Yeah. Just a bucket of mics to drop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, uh, that's pretty cool. So, yeah, that was basically it. Okay. Was that better than what they told you today? <laughs> they didn't say anything, honestly. Like, I feel like people just forget, like, they'll hear a talk and then they'll just instantly forget it. And then when you ask them, like, so what? Well, it's kind of, I think it's kind of like a, a stream of information flowing into the ether of information they already have. Yeah. And nothing is changed, it's just confirmed. Yeah. So there's nothing, there's no new synaptic connections. Yeah. I do remember someone saying, uh, they're like, he talked about how great the Book of Mormon was. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay, okay, very good, very good. But they didn't talk about how he's going to change the name of it. He didn't, <laughs> no, that's a Linden exclusive. That's a sclusy. Yeah, I don't know. He's, uh... He's a he's a bold and daring prophet if there ever was one. More so perhaps even than our good friend Joseph Smith Jr. 
the prophet of the restoration. It's a borderline heresy, young man. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's like, polygamy, it's coming back. Everyone's like, oh. Doubtful. Uh, doubtful. Doubtful indeed. Lennon's official take, doubtful. Might take as well. I mean, I did just finish reading the book uh, Breaking Free mm, from uh, Rachel Jeffs. Oh, snap. Talking about how she escaped book the review. FLDS church. Yeah, how did she escape? Ugh. Hashtag Indigo employee. I'm not allowed to talk about books Why? over any form of media without self-identifying myself as a, an employee of Indigo. Oh, are you for real? Yeah, that's a real thing. You're not allowed to talk about books of any kind across any media unless you identify that you are, in fact, an employee of Indigo. Yeah. Well, okay. imagine if I come on the podcast and all I do is talk about how great these books are. Yeah. And then maybe a publisher is like, yo, you have a secret employee that's only promoting Random House books. Oh, okay. And then Penguin Publishing comes at us. Like, is there some sort of conspiracy going on? And it's like, yeah, Random House <laughs> is slipping is. 20s into my pocket <laughs> to promote their books on the podcast. I'm getting rich, baby. So then I officially have to say, no, that's not the case. Okay. But yeah, it was a, a riveting story. Read cool. it in two sittings. Two sittings? How big was it? Uh, your standard size book. What's that? <laughs> I don't read a lot. <laughs> 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 Anywhere from uh, 260 to like 300 one pages. to 200. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> 50 to 60. All right. Yeah. yeah. You're uh, like, what, what's a book? What's uh, a sorry, it? book. Uh, I'm only uh, familiar with the Book of Mormon. Now here, here was my takeaway. Yeah. When I started reading it, I was like, polygamy is whack. Yeah. And then as I got further <laughs> along. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and then as I got further along, and they kind of, I was like, maybe just the FLDS are whack. But there are people that can do polygamy right. But then I was kind of just like, I don't think polygamy oh, no. is, I don't think that's God's way. I, I don't think it is either. Well, I, I mean, here's the thing, though. Confirmed. That's a, that's confirmed. A very... The FLDS are insane. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's what you said, though, is a very, like, it's, that's a bit of a controversial statement. That is it? polygamy is not of God and that it's whack. Because it's kind of, and I don't know how much we should get into this. On <laughs> Topical this, topics. On this, on this show. Yeah, screw it. Um, but that's, you know, there's a lot, there's a number of apostles who are married to two women in eternity. Well, yeah, that's the old, like, you know uh, secret polygamy. Secret polygamy. Not so secret anymore. Well, I mean, if you want to talk about now that we've people unveiled that are, it, well, people that are sealed to multiple women, President Nelson, <laughs> our prophet, his current wife, a practicing polygamist, not his first wife, right? So, how does that work? What is it? So, like, is that going to be in the afterlife? Is that going to be? Uh, he's going to be in a polygamist. Is he married to this current wife, like for eternity, or just like for time? Because I know that's a thing, right? Like some people well, that's get like, married to each other. Just for this life, civilly. Well, that's when uh, a woman who's already sealed to someone marries another man. Can't be sealed to oh, multiple okay. men. Okay, right. But men can be sealed to multiple women. Uh-huh. So it's like a, I guess it's like a polygamy in the eternal sense, a nice little work around our modern day laws. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it is interesting. Uh, what's, what's my take of it? I don't know. What do you, what do you make of it? Do you, do you think we're dropping bombs on people right now? I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like, well, like I said, my, my, <laughs> my one takeaway was, is like, it seems like polygamy could be done right. That's a, well, that's a mission story. You think, you think polygamy could be done right? I mean, like, apparently it, it, if God, you know, has, has made it uh, available in the afterlife. The other thing with that, too, is the assumption is that in the afterlife, you're not going to sort of be subject to all the earthly, you know... Uh, yeah, it's not like mortal life. ...follies that we have here. Yeah. Uh, it's a whole different ballgame. It's a whole other ballgame. I don't know. I do. I was about to say, I don't want to speculate, but I do love st- speculating. And if the prophet gets to speculate about name changes of the Book of Mormon... We get to speculate... About polygamy in the afterlife, our new podcast. <laughs> <laughs> should never have brought up that book. Never should have. But I can say the FLDS are not doing polygamy right. 
No, there's a lot of other stuff. What about that guy that on the TLC show? The like, uh, what's his is name? Is it Big Love or something? And that's the. No, that's a. That's the. That fictional was a fictionalized. One that Tom Hanks does. To yeah. Slander the church. Yeah. Yeah. All you Tom Hanks fans out there, remember he, he is an Mormons. enemy of Mormons. <laughs> he does hate Mormons. Um. So I think uh, no, it's the it's the TLC show. Uh, it's with that guy with like the long hair. Uh, but he's like sort of normal, you know, uh, sister wives, sister wives, sister wives is what it's called. And they seem, you know what? If it's like, if there's, if there's women and apparently there are who want to do this. And I think here's the thing though. They only seem to want it. Like, are there any women who were not raised in a polygamist family who are like, I want to go be a polygamist wife. Because it seems to be to me that's the only like group of people who want who would be willing to enter into it. It is interesting you bring that up because one uh, LDS scholar that I read about recently said Mormons, like the LDS Church, yeah, never actually practice polygamy. They only ever practice plural marriage because it takes three generations living plural marriage to uh-huh. even get to a society that is living polygamy. What is that? What do you mean by it? What is it's that like mean? what you said. It's like, why would anyone choose to do that? Who is, lives in a monogamous society ever choose to be in a plural marriage? Unless plural marriage is the society, in which case it's polygamy. Uh, so polygamy is more in reference to like the nature of the society of the like community? The, the culture and the society. Where, whereas plural marriage... Is like the practice. O- according to that guy. So like that church, so the early church... Polygamy never became a part of the culture. They were just practicing plural marriage. Sure it was. And it never really became part of the culture before it got cut down. And so then it took like the FLDS and all those like. They went running with it. Yeah, they were went running with it and made it a part of their society. Well, Brig, the Brigster, he went running with it too. Well, Joseph Smith went running with it first. And then he was sort of secret running with it. And then Brigham Young really went running with it. And then... Uh, who who did it stop under? Who was that? I think Wilford Woodruff. The Woodster. He's the one with the manifesto, I believe. Yeah. That's like, no more. No more. Yeah. And there's like that picture of all like the early practicers in prison or something. Like that black and white old photo. Um, so anyway, but like, so fast forward to today. Uh, you, got, you got yourself like all these different. Th- so like how many different Mormon factions do we have at this point there's actually a lot i remember looking up on the old wikipedia yeah just like dozens that's a lot and, and like, how i think many of those the, i think the flds would be the biggest one and are all of these guys are they practicing polygamy like is that sort of the reason they want to and how big is any, any one faction obviously like flds like they're big they're may are they the biggest sort of uh well sub- and it's weird because like warren group. jeffs is like in prison for life. Yeah. And he still runs the church. Yeah. It's like those gangs, you know, <laughs> yeah. the gangs who like the, the leaders in prison. Makes like his phone calls and is still like, yeah. <laughs> they like bring him a list of people. And he's still like assigning marriages and stuff. And yeah. Like that's, that is true. I, there was like a, like they decide who lives where and they got like big companies. They have like multi-million oh, dollar like concrete millions. companies and yeah, stuff. Yeah. 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 I read a uh, banner of heaven not too long ago. And it was talking about how, a lot of these groups, like, they'll take advantage of, like, social welfare and stuff. Yeah. Something like that. Like, sort of game the system where the they'll just be receiving millions and millions of dollars in welfare. But it's all getting sort of, like, conglomerated right, right, towards right. the... Because that was... Uh, whatever. The, that was the one part. Thing the Rachel she was talking about. Because she was, like, the daughter of the prophet. Yeah. So she lived a pretty charmed life. Yeah. But then when he was in prison and going kind of crazy... He would like took away her privileges and then she was like living alone with one of her children and he, and so they stopped giving her food and if she wanted food, she had to go into welfare. But then when she got her like, well, for food stamps, they were given to her uncle and he controlled that stuff. And that's kind of how she got driven out of the place. (laughs) Oh my gosh. That's awful. That's the, so that's the kind of stuff that like still do that. Well, because, like, the FBI, that's how they try to get them. Because here's the thing. They have not, like, kind of really, what's the word? 
prosecuted anyone for polygamy since like 1955. Yeah. Because whenever they try to do that, because you remember that famous raid in Texas, that's uh-huh. kind of how like the FLDS ever entered the picture for me. Mm-hmm. I think it was like 2007. Okay. They raided that Texas place. And so it's just like an image of like federal agents taking like right, dozens of right, children right, right. away from their mothers. Yeah. No one wants to see that. Breaking a community. But the community is awful, I guess, from our perspective. But, like, also from everything I've read and seen, right. it, it seems pretty awful. And, like, the last time they tried to do that was, like, 1955. And it's like, no one. Like, no one in America wants is that. like, oh, yeah, I feel so good about you taking children away from their mothers and making them live in, you know, like, they had, like, these refugee camps. Yeah. And, like, taking... So no one likes that. No. Okay. And so it's strange. So that's kind of like the big problem where it's like, who who's the bad guys? You know, Warren Jeff, the prophet who controls everyone's lives personally. Yeah. He's the bad guy. But the people that suffer are the children and the mothers. Yeah. So that's why they let them do polygamy all they want because there's nothing they can do. Dude, that's a bad – I think there's got to be a way for like that the government steps in and says – because – I yeah. guess the other part of it too is that they're not civilly, they're not legally married, like according to the laws of the land, but they're yeah. like spiritually married. Well, or are they? Because that's how the, the only time they go after them is with like welfare fraud or yeah. anything involving like underage marriage. Yeah, that's the only time the government like will step in. I think they should step in and be like. So that's actually what got uh, old Warren. In jail for life. Which one? Was the marrying underage girls and molesting them. Yeah. Technically. Yeah. That's not good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think they should send in the government and they should like sort of do a full sweep. Because you're right that if, if you are enjoying it, it's, I think it probably just needs to be more regulated. Like it's the Wild West out in these like compounds and stuff. Well, that's the thing. Because when they leave the FLDS church... They leave it and they go to another polygamous community. Right. So it's like all the ex FLDS people still live polygamy. They just live it out in the regular world. Man. Not on their like little communes or whatever. This is wacky. It's it's wild. This is our, uh, you know, this is our. And I read it in a book. Our history, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Wow, what a. What a topical topic that was. I don't know. Do we have anything more to say about it for now? I think... Here's well, you I, brought it up. You said polygamy's coming back. I said... Well, I, that was a joke. <laughs> it's like, it's already here! <laughs> well, you know, as the church... But, like, seriously, is there is there a world where, theoretically, you know, especially as, like, marriage laws get a little more loose, um, you know, like, say... As as far as like the government goes, right? So it's like we're getting we're coming to a place where things that were not legal before, like gay marriage, et cetera, becomes legal. Um, you're gonna see. I bet you're gonna see people fighting for more different types of marriage, including probably polygamy or plural marriage. Well, because it's effectively, it's not legal, but it's not illegal. Right, because they don't. No one, no one goes to jail or gets prosecuted for the stuff. But it's like, you know, tax wise, why <laughs> tax wives? <laughs> like you can't just like marry off a bunch of wives and then split your income with all of them for tax purposes. Right. That's so funny that that's the thing they're like. <laughs> they spend the most time worried about. I guess it's not. So no one, sense, the government but... doesn't really care. No. Like, it's like a guy that has, you know, six kids with five different women yeah. is living polygamy. <laughs> He's just not married to them. I guess you're right. Yeah. The government doesn't seem to mind that. Yeah. So how can they mind that a bunch of weirdos down in Colorado and Utah have, you know, like 30 kids with 20 wives? I guess you're right. It's, and they're just like, oh, they're only legally married to one, the yeah, first one. Yeah. What are they? What are they going to do to stop that? Here's what I was going to say. I was going to say they were. Go- they should go in there and just like, hey, everybody, this is what the world is like. I don't know if you have any idea if the the world is like a pretty nice place now. They, you know, we have iPhones, we have you know Netflix. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. 
there's <laughs> just full of documentaries about you guys. I don't know if you know that. Um, and if you want, here's like an opportunity and a chance to like get out. Or, you know, and, and if you are, if you are in a situation where it's like, this is rough, we're going to set you up with like, you know, maybe make like a centralized refugee place for like recovering, you know, make it like a, like a place to like, well, like, they, a, like a halfway place to well, get they, out they of They do it. have that. There is like, it's not a government funded organization, but there are people that are, are there with open arms to help these people. Cause uh, Rachel, she had, you know, got help. Yeah. She was supported by these like. NGO type ex yeah. FLDS kind yeah. of groups. But the point is, is when you're in there, what's the number one sin in the FLDS church? Uh, is it betraying the FLDS church? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's the, that's the greatest sin that'll send you to outer darkness. Outer darkness. Yeah. And it's like the rest of the world is evil. Right. And the truth is only with the prophet who's in prison. Ooh, man, it's a rough, that's a rough one. Cause yeah, there is some like, it's I guess it is brainwashing, you know, that's that's taking place and these people are like it's like what's her name? Uh uh Smart, Elizabeth Smart. Mm-hmm. Then they find her and she was like, No, I'm fine, you know, like she was very in the pocket of this guy. I don't know. That's what I've heard. That like they found her and they're like, Are you like Elizabeth she's Smart? Is this the guy that kidnapped you? She's got had like Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, and she's like, No, it's fine, I'm fine, everything's fine. Um, but they weren't fine. But they weren't fine at all. I think there was some threatenings that had occurred, and obviously some brainwashings had taken place too. Scary stuff, man. Scary, scary stuff. This is uh, a little different tone for this episode than uh, mission stories. Mission stories, polygamy stories. So yeah, it was great to have the prophet come visit us. Anyway, so the prophet came, and it was great, and uh, lots of laughs were had, and uh, that's good. That's good. Um, we're like 36 minutes in. Do we, uh, you, you had like some other stuff, didn't you? Well, just that you had mentioned uh-huh. how you were going through your journals. Yes, I did. I got them right here. Yeah. I'm staring at a stack of Troy's mission journals Yes, and how you were like, wow, I never realized how much anxiety and self doubt I had, yeah. but reading these journals <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's just funny. I was like, my journals were just me being a comedian. <laughs> I went back and read them. Uh-huh. I got to December 2008 and I was just like, this is just a collection of self-doubt, <laughs> anxiety. <laughs> this it's is like, just sadness personified in a book. Where I was like, I think you just took all your like mental toxicity that you had as a missionary and you just put it in your journal <laughs> yeah. so that you could go out and be a missionary. Yeah, just be a human. I think you're right. And it's like going back and reading them, it's almost like, it's almost like the the reason you were writing in them was like the process of of you know exercising these demons you had and going back and reading it is like a you know it's an exercise in wading back into those some negative oh, yeah. feelings yeah the ups and downs yeah it's like that Rick and Morty episode where they like <laughs> detoxify yeah <laughs> and they're like the most toxic versions of themselves are in that machine yeah. That's my mission journal. That's your mission journal. The most toxic version of Elder Naglas is in that book. Oh, I'd love to read so that. So that the holy version of Elder Naglas could go out into the world. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, and then I thought it'd be funny. I was just like, I'm just going to read. I found you know, some things made me laugh out loud. Yeah. And this is one completely. I could not explain this, but I sent it to my siblings in the group chat. And they seemed legitimately offended. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait. So for here this. we go. All this right. is uh, December 11th. 2008. It reads, P-Day the other day was interesting. I learned all my siblings, minus a few, are completely insane. (laughs) I suppose for history's sake, I'll be more explicit. Megan and the boy are still legit. Uh, My youngest brother, Brayden, we called him the boy boy. until he became a man. Is he called the man now? Now he's just called Brayden. He did not earn his name until he became a man. Growing up, he was always known as the boy. Uh Megan and the boy are still legit, but Caitlin and Leah are deceived, and the truth is not with them. (laughs) I don't wish to expound any further, since this is all likely to change shortly. Busy day tomorrow. Lord, sustain me. (laughs) So I sent that to them, and they, they didn't seem too impressed. Um, and then the thing is, and they're like, why would you say that? I was like, that was 10 years ago. I don't know. How do they feel about you saying this on a podcast? <laughs> oh, I'm sure they're fine with it. 
Very good. Very good. And so they're like, why did I say that? Why did you? I have no idea. I don't yeah. know what happened. Do you know what you learned? Was there like a news piece that came to your attention? I liked it. It's like, I don't want to expound any further on this because it will probably change shortly because my life was so volatile. Right. And your feelings were so volatile. <laughs> so I just, yeah. Your it's opinions. like, for history's sake. <laughs> Let it be known. My siblings are insane. And it's like, Megan and Brayden are okay. I remember giving a talk about my sister in uh, in a in church once, mm-hmm. and how I don't know some like some like strange thing where some like story from her youth, you know, where she was like partying a little more, <laughs> <laughs> and I use this as like as like a talk, like a topic. I can't imagine she appreciated that. I never told her. She, uh-huh. If she listens to this, she'll know. But um, yeah, but I was just like, I use it as like a, I was like whipping up tears in the middle of the talk. And I was just like, uh-huh. and I'm happy to say she's back in the fold or whatever. <laughs> and, uh, and it was just like, looking back, I'm so embarrassed of that now. Cause that was, cause yeah. I remember like going to a, going to a dinner with a member's afterwards and they're like hey that was a that was a good talk and one of the guys was like yeah it was great he cried it was wonderful i think he was being sarcastic though i I felt the sarcasm and i felt the embarrassment of right am i just like capitalizing on you know my sister's life to to uh i don't know emotionally manipulate people Mm -hmm. and i think the answer was yes and i think that's probably why i felt bad because like my home the my farewell talk was like you know, we were the heroes of our wards, and this was like the for me. It was one of the things that like sealed how you know, here my hero status was like his talk was incredible. Mm. So I gave this like this great talk. So ever since then, I was like, I'm the master talk giver. I need to emotionally manipulate people to give great talks. Um, you're not you're not too wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, maybe emotional manipulation is like a a more devious way to say it, but, um, you know, so you, I'd call it eliciting an emotional response. Okay. Cause you want people to laugh. You want people to cry. I think that's a good talk. Yeah. I think Jay, our good friend, Jeffrey, R. Holland, <laughs> I mean, I hope he would consider us good friends if he knows we exist. He doesn't unless he, he pours over the records of the church and just knows everyone's name. It's not rule it out. What do you think? He probably gave us our mission know. calls. He probably did. He it was, delivered it was them. probably him that fateful Thursday. That, it was a Thursday for you? I think Thursdays is when they, the apostles oh, they, do mission calls. Oh, they get together. Yeah. Oh, that would be interesting to see. Um, what were we talking about? We were talking about your, your crazy right. journals. Right. And I realized is, I was like, this is just a collection. Because I, I always thought. If there was a mental disorder I ever had, yeah. it was that I don't have enough anxiety. <laughs> right. That yeah. I should be more anxious about some things and I'm not. Yeah. And I'm like, how is that not the case? Reading this journal. <laughs> you are a ball of nerves. A ball of anxiety. <laughs> and it's like things that were under your control, you freaked out about. Things that weren't under your control, you freaked out about. Yeah. At one point, I was convinced that my companion and I they taught us that um, if there's something you're doing wrong, it affects the entire zone. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's and so, a big one. And so I said I would start waking up at 6.45 instead of 7 <laughs> so that the zone would be more successful. And that I said kind of tongue-in-cheek, but. <laughs> well, that would technically be uh, disobeying the rules if you were to do that. Well, that was what's so funny. There was also a quote from my trainer. Wait, wait, five forty. Wait, six forty-five. Six forty. Okay, no, right. that is is that. Sorry, I thought you meant five, like or like six fifteen. That's what I thought you said. Right, sort of a thing. But yeah, six forty-five. That's yeah, fifteen minutes too late, Lyndon. But it would be an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> a forty-five minute improvement. No, no, a fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. I would. Okay. I was always waking up at seven. seven. Well, here's the thing. Early on in the mission, I would find like. You know, elders, they wake up at 6.30. Yeah. They'll roll out of bed, (laughs) do a single (laughs) push-up. Yeah. (laughs) And then when they go down into the lower part of their first push-up, they're just back to sleep. Just lay there. Yeah. And I was like, you are effectively 
You're not, you're not keeping the rule. You're not waking up at six 30 and exercising for 30 minutes. Right. I was like, I could do the same thing you're doing by just staying in bed the whole time. Right. And we're still both breaking the rule. I'm just doing it more comfortably. And for that, I was branded a heretic. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's the difference between like missionaries who play politics and missionaries who don't. You strike me as a missionary who did not play politics. Nope. I, d- I was trying to play. I don't, I think near the end of my mission, I was, I was more consciously like I made, I did make a decision late into my mission. I was a zone leader and you find, I finally had to admit to myself, I want to be an assistant because you, it's always like back of every, I don't know about everybody, but like, you know, you get to a certain point you're like, I, I guess I might want to be an assistant maybe. But then like, I had to like sort of admit, yeah, I want to do that. And I would like actively pray for that to happen. And then I, and it did sort of change how I behaved like president. I was a little more like, Hey president. Oh, great idea. Yeah. That's really, you're so inspired. And he, you know, he's a good, great, great guy. Uh, but I just laid it on extra thick, you know, you make me sick. I do. I make myself sick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the worst. Everyone listening to this is like, ugh. but, um, that's a good example of that. Just because I, you know, listening to you, I was like, I was the, I was the get out of bed, kneel and, pr- you know, say my morning prayer. And, you know, it's a bit of a long prayer, a bit of an eyes closed, kneeling at your bedside prayer. 15 minutes I petitioning think- God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, your eyes are closed, so it's like, you're not, but you're not sleeping, you're kneeling. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, I have, I did wake up a few times at the edge of my bed, just like kneeling though. Um, this sort of like segues into like one of the stories I wanted to tell you, one of like the topics, which was uh, s- sleeping, just sort of sleeping as a general topic. Because mm. I would, yeah, so I would like wake up and I would kneel at my bed and sometimes I would like fall asleep while I was praying. Mm-hmm. And it's like, did I do that on purpose? Ah, uh, maybe, sometimes. But like, I could never admit that to myself. Um, sometimes I would wake up I don't know about you. Do, if, do you ever like sleep talk or sleep walk or anything? I don't think so. Because I used to do this as a missionary. I think it was like the more intense the circumstances or more like unfamiliar, the more I likely I am to like sleep talk or walk. Anyway, I used to like pray in my sleep. I used to like wake up in the middle of the night. And I remember like my the first companion that I trained, uh, He like the next morning he's like, Elder, uh, Elder Cooper, I noticed – I noticed you were praying last night in bed, like out loud. And, uh, <laughs> and you're like, that's just me being righteous. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, I knew I had a righteous trainer when he like prays in his sleep. Um, I'm just, I'm just glad I didn't say anything that was like terrifying. Cause I can only imagine, you know, like you wake up in the middle of the night to hear your companion, like, dear God, bless me that I won't kill my companion tonight. Amen. <laughs> you know, and he's just like pulls the covers up close. You know, like oh God, please. I also pray for that. It's like hold the hold back the voices, God. Name Jesus Christ, Amen. <laughs> so anyway, apparently I used to just like pray in the middle of the night, not you know anything too serious or sinister. Uh, and I would no, but I would like used to get up and like turn on the light because I thought I was I had this like ever constant fear of like. Sleeping in, and so I like. I think it would like, it would it would translate into middle of the night. I would think it was time to wake up, and I would turn on the light, and I would kneel, and then I would wake up, uh, maybe an hour or two later, and the lights were off, and I would just be like, "What the heck?" Like kneeling at my bedside, and it would be you know like five in the morning, and I'd be like, "Oh, I guess I, I guess I did it again." <laughs> Your companion just says, "I well." He's just like, "Why is the light on, you idiot?" And I'm like, turns the light off. So anyway, that was a that was a bit of my. I don't know. I think it like speaks to the stressfulness of like, of of just like there's a lot of, uh, you know, stress comes out in different ways. I think that's one of them for I, me. It was. Yeah. Did you ever uh, have weird dreams or anything? Um. No. You didn't have any weird dreams. Yeah. No. Oh. My weird dream was that I dreamed I was home from my mission, but that I wasted my whole mission. <laughs> surprise, surprise. 
<laughs> You're just anxiety fueled dreams. Dude, it was a nightmare. And then like I, I've, I'll have dreams now that I'm home. I'll have dreams that like I served a second mission and. Uh, oh, I, I had those dreams. It's crazy, yeah. Those are very stressful too. <laughs> I love. Why am I on a second mission? I remember my first one. I was on uh, on a train. I was heading to Baltimore yeah. to serve my second mission. <laughs> I was like a mercenary. To Baltimore. And they were like, I'm we're mer- sending in a, an expert. Yeah. <laughs> and we're sending in an RM to Baltimore. Yeah. And I was kind of just like excited because I was going back on the mission, a pro. Yeah. But I was also just like, boy, I don't want to do this for Why two years. Why am I doing ago. this? Yeah. No, I do remember. Yeah. On the mission, I would dream. That I was suddenly like transported onto the family boat out at Gull Lake. Mm. And my family would be like, oh, Lyndon, what are you doing here? And they were all like glad to see me. And I was yeah. glad to be back at the lake with the family. Uh, and then suddenly I'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm still supposed to be on my mission. Yeah. What am I doing here? No. And then I'd wake up. And then you wake up in a, in a cold sweat with your, mis- your companion out of a pillow over your head sure there's some symbolism there to be dreaming with your family surrounded by water nowhere to escape (laughs) that's interesting it's like i gotta get back my mission's not done yeah i had a lot of those just guilt i was like infested with guilt the whole time i was a missionary lots of guilt um i didn't have enough guilt Tell me more about your journals. What else did you have in, in your well, journals? Well, here's the thing. It was taxing to read them. Yeah. So I only got to December. But there was a I could see I could see the point where I, I broke. Yeah. And I really because I was I very much had like the greeny earnestness. Yeah. Not and, fire. Not greeny fire. <laughs> yeah, I guess they called it greeny fire. Yeah. That's the term. Uh mine died in October of two thousand eight. Okay. I could <laughs> That's when I, I got to the mission field. Yeah. <laughs> so I could see the day where my greeny fire was extinguished. Yeah. And was replaced with junior companion jadedness. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, uh there was why, some... what was it? What did you say? Uh, I what think was it... said? Well, it was an interesting time because I never, you know, I talked about my, uh, breaker and his, uh, his chemical cycle, right? <laughs> NyQuil to sleep and Mountain Dew to wake up. <laughs> yeah. And it's just after, cause I do remember the day that I finished reading the miracle of forgiveness during one of my companions afternoon naps. Yeah. Cause it's like, my journal is just like, I am racked with the memories <laughs> harrowed up by my many sins. Yeah. And it's just like, Oh, I remember that day I finished reading miracle of forgiveness and I felt like trash. The many toenails I never threw away. <laughs> The many, the many looks I gave to uh, Cindy Lou Who in junior high. Yeah, that's a crazy book. <laughs> yeah, a nutty book. I was uh, like, that's a day. That was that's a in day. The, that was in October or November of two thousand eight. <laughs> um, I remember I had this like, I have this. It's actually in my room. I like. I remember. I still have it, and it's sort of like this monument to uh, perseverance that. I, I'll read every now and then, but I broke in the, in the MTC and I had, I wrote it, I wrote it all down and I, and it comes across. It's like, it's like, well, dear journal, I broke today. I'm a broken man. <laughs> I am not who I once was. I am forever shattered, <laughs> you know? And it was just like, I'm wearing a mask of a facade of a person who I'm supposed to be, you know, all this kind of stuff. Very dramatic. I used to really like uh, Hunter S. Thompson. I was really into mm-hmm. like his style, so I tried to be very you know verbose in my my writing. But um, I also remember there was a. I think I compared, I compared all of my like you know that scene in Apocalypse Now where Willard is on the sh- on the boat and he's sort of like describing everyone. Yeah, I did that exact same thing, and I even said I'm like Willard on Apocalypse Now. Here's all my people in my district. <laughs> and I like listed them and they're weird little, it's like, he's the captain and he likes rock and roll and, um, he's a chef. Um, but yeah, no, I, yeah, I broke So I remember reading that and it's like, but you know what? I made it past that. Here I am now with a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know it was just, it's just so funny how, and I remember there was, you know, Andrew, the true and faithful Andrew Cacao. He was always All like, right. We forgot emails. <laughs> We haven't got to that part yet. Yeah. How he talked about um he wants to know how these things affected us 
affected us to this day. Yeah. And I, I guess I have, cause I realized, cause you know, there's things that happen. Yeah. And I remember there was these very attractive college girls that kind of fell into our lap and became investigators. And they were like, we thought they were so golden. They fell into your laps. Figuratively. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we meant to go find someone else, but they were there and they're like, yeah. And so, and they were just like golden yeah. and like Jody and Susie. Jody and Susie. Jody and Susie. And what do they uh, look like? They look good. They look good. I can tell you that much. <laughs> what color was there? Okay, that's enough. <clears throat> Easy, Troy. All right. <laughs> but, uh, and then eventually, of course, and we thought they were golden investigators. Golden haired. Eventually, they dropped us. You know. Yeah. It's they, like, there's they people's. They a Google search and they're like, eh, I don't think so. A little, you know, people's lives, they just come and go and then not continue in the investigations. <laughs> people's lives come and go. <laughs> And they just, you know, they're they're just done, mortal done hanging out with us. Yeah, and we're like so convinced that it's because yeah. of our unrighteousness. Right. There's yeah. no other possible explanation. None other than then we are unworthy. So what's the what's the connection to today? Do you have this effect? Well, then I kind of got to this. It seemed because you would always I always talked about Ammon boasting yeah. in the Lord because you could never say if anything good happened to you on your mission, right. it was just you doing the will of the Lord. Yeah. But if anything went wrong on your mission, it it's was your completely fault. your fault. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like to this day, <laughs> I have this just like complex. Yeah. Where I'm just like, who is this God fella? <laughs> He's always there when things go right. But mm -hmm. if things go wrong, he didn't have anything to do with it. It was all you. You got some God issues here. Should we talk about that a little more? <laughs> Back to emails. <laughs> we, uh, we're at an hour. <laughs> so I was like, that probably came from my mission. Yeah. That's interesting. No you, one has reconciled that for me. You know, yeah, I, there is a lot of like, um, things about the way that, and I don't, I think as a missionary, you're constantly talking about God and you're talking about how he works and at no other time in your life are you encountering a situ like situations where it's like, this is God's work, a.k.a. God is directly involved in everything that you're doing. It's, mm -hmm. like you, it's like this is how God is practically involved in a life. This is an experiment and how you can like actually see it. And you're praying for stuff all day and you're like, you know, and so, and so you see that. And sometimes you, you come across other people's opinions about like, how does, how does God work? And you have, you know, every, everyone has their own opinion about that. And you're, you're sucking it all up and you're sort of like, and you're discovering things and things aren't going how you thought they were going. And so, yeah, there is sort of like this jading process, I think, that occurs as a missionary that I don't think you can escape. I think everyone experiences it, uh, where eventually you, you come to your, your own conclusions. And I think that's half of what a mission is, is probably for, is to cement for yourself, uh, you know, what, how, how does God work and how does it work in your life and that sort of stuff? I had a, I had an interesting, <laughs> send us emails with your answer to this query. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us, please. How does God work? Um, truly though, cause this, like, I haven't seen a consensus on this. Like I've, cause this is a topic I really actually like to discuss cause I have my thoughts. Is God actively cursing Lyndon? <laughs> Or is Lyndon just terrible at his life management? I think we should. I think we should actually talk about it because that's an interesting, and that might get more into like philosophy. But that would be an interesting. Uh, we can, you know, we can tell a mission story right off the bat, get it out of the way, and then talk about how <laughs> does God work. Actually, no, because there's so many mission stories that are directly like I've said. I have a good one that sort of speaks to this point exactly and about Revelation. I don't think we have time for it today, but uh, I'll send a. Reminder to myself right now, Troy, if you're listening to this, please remember to write this down. Uh, how does God work? Let's try to, I don't know. I think that'd be an interesting discussion. What do you think? New topical topic. A topical top. Ick. We do have some business to this. To, do we have housekeeping? We or? do have some housekeeping that we forgot. We uh, neglected at the top of the episode. Going to have to double up emails next week, I guess. Yeah. Well, we can just read them real. We got like. I know. Some minutes left. Our fellow. Uh, our enemy of podcasting, Who's Alex that? Williams, would be upset if we didn't read his. <laughs> he does. All right, I'll, I'll jump to his real quick. Um, yeah, this is from Alex Williams. Uh, Troy has 
good sound effects. Hey, thanks, man. I would like to know who wrote the fanfic right. Forgot about that. Almost forgot about that. I have a great deal of respect for that. Sorry to hear Lyndon is out of stories. Want to hear his episode on, quote-unquote, My Wax Museum for some non-mission stories? It comes out June 11th. Come on, dude. A little self-promoter. We'll promote it for you. Comes out June 11th. Give her a listen. Oh, he says, give her a listen? Quote, uh, question mark. At soundcloud.com slash backslash my wax museum. Was that a good scripted shout out to myself slash Linden? It was good. Very good. Also, I don't think you're running out of mission stories, but you might be running out of mission stories that you know how to tell well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeesh. Yee. Wow. <laughs> True and faithful, Alex. He really is becoming our, our sworn enemy, isn't he? <laughs> um... Anyway, thanks, Alex, uh, <laughs> for that. Uh, <laughs> we got a, another one. Hey, storytellers, great podcast. That McDonald's story made me think about a Big Mac, so I got one after the show and realized I have a preaching McDonald's story uh, himself. He has one, too. Also, since you said I should see a doctor, as my heart is probably blocked with cheese, <laughs> <laughs> so my heart is big and proud of your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we did make, we did make, we did make fun of his. Heart. We speculated that his heart was abnormally, grotesquely large. Uh good, good job for getting that looked at. So my heart is big and proud of your podcast, and I don't like the people who don't listen. So my heart murmurs. <laughs> your biggest fan, Art Vanderlei, uh, code name for Jeremy Olson. P.S. Get me on the show. Yeah, that's another item we should discuss. We've invested. I've invested. <laughs> in it. We. We, the show, has invested in uh, uh, the means to have more people on the podcast. We just need uh, a few more things, and we should be good to go. So I expect more guests soon-ish. Uh, next pay period, I guess. More, more than zero. <laughs> more than zero. Uh, to talk to talk about their mission stories, and yeah, it, honestly, maybe this is a good time to shout out, call out. If you have like a good mission story and you feel like sharing it, and you think it's best told in person, um, the best way, you know, get, send us an email at the mission stories podcast at gmail dot com. Hit us up on Instagram, uh, the mission stories podcast, and or you know, text one of us if you have our number. Uh, mm -hmm. but if you are outside of our personal, would that be, I'm just, I'm looking forward to the day when it's just like, there's people outside of our personal circles who there's a few of them. There's a, actually a few. Oh, uh, but, um, it'd be really cool to grow that number. Um, so yeah, send us your stories and, and send us uh, a request if you want to come on and we'll, we'll put you on the short list. We'll put you on the short list. Uh, we'll set it Some up. Some we'll put on the long list if we can. <laughs> yeah. Of course, we want good quality content, so we'll be sifting through these and uh, picking out the good one from the bad ones. One final thought mm -hmm. before we go. My friend thought, my friend Nick, uh, he was listening, and he, his suggestion was... Nick's got a few too many ideas about this podcast, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> He's like the silent third member. Um, here's what he said. I, and I only mentioned because I think it was a good It was an interesting idea. And he said... There's a lot of people, young guys, who like haven't served missions yet, and he's like, I wonder if they will listen to this as like a, you know, like a story sort of thing, and maybe you know they don't have someone in their immediate family who has mission stories, so this is like an interesting thing to sort of like rev them up and be like, yeah, this is what I can do, and uh, I, he his suggestion was like, here's some tips for the future missionary, but I was like, eh, I don't think. Da -da 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 um, There's nothing we could say that would ever help or prepare them. I, I did have they did raise the question in my mind where it's like, would either of us be <clears throat> good examples to uh, future missionaries? Absolutely, I think so. Uh, we served them, we did them. Full, faithful, honorable return. Honorable return, baby. Anyway, uh, so those are some things uh, we'll think about moving forward. I think they have a Moroni's Quest this summer. Yeah. We should head on out there. Head on out. Do a start live show. <laughs> start promoting the podcast to all these youths. Talk about <laughs> It's not a terrible idea just to, you know. But I was like, oh, do, do we talk about like some heavy stuff? I don't know. Like, do we spend half of it talking about polygamy? Hey, we still, 
Uh, we still got to get to my topical topic. Uh, masonry. Masonry. Yeah. Shoot. I, I was going to ask. That's a that. mission story. Okay. Next time. I'll make a note of that. Yeah, Linda, we still got lots of good stories, Alex. Alex, we have so many stories. We're backed up. Yeah. Yeah, we need to take We don't need your suggestions. Likes. Yeah. Uh, Lyndon, it's been a pleasure. It's always a fun time. It's never a bad time. Okay, that's a weird way to put that <laughs> on your end. <laughs> Here I am saying... Never what, a bad time. Here I means... am saying what a fun time I'm having. You're like, it's not a bad time. And the opposite of bad is... Good. Is that what you always mean? <laughs> you don't deal in nuance at all. You're just you're you're either like bad or or fun. Good. This is a mission stories podcast. There's no room for gray area. That's right. <laughs> Black and white thinking only, baby. Black and white, baby. That's what our uh, actually. I was gonna say that's what our our. Our picture is like black and white, but actually, if you notice, it is a it's a shades of gray in there. It is. Uh, the key to uh, navigating the waters of your testimony moving forward. Anyway, moving moving on, Lyndon, do you have any anything to say? Any words of wisdom? You're asking me for my last words. Do you have any last words? Stay true and faithful. Thanks, folks. We'll see you next time. We love you. Bye-bye.